Sean Puffy Combs. Let's talk about it. Savage! I'm a savage! Oh! I'm a savage! Whatever I want, I'm going to get! Whatever I want, I have to get! for like the, the, the weekend of the 14th when the soundtrack comes out? If, if so, bump somebody. All right, thanks. All right, love you, man. Bye. I got my MTV. My first thing I want to address is the fact that there's a lot of people popping up in the media sort of throwing things that Diddy did up under the rug. And they're trying to say, let's not judge unless ye shall be judged. One time for your mind, two time for your soul. Check it out, Puff. Ain't nobody perfect. I can't be a pot and call the kettle black. Back in the days, right? Before all this thing, oh, we gonna call the cops and somebody getting arrested. The police used to come to your house and tell you, yo, take a walk. I used to have a wife, that mother would bust me in the head and coke bottle and fucking put hands on me. So I put hands back on her ass, mother period. So, can't call it black, but I had to let her know that mother you doing this shit, how the can I look at you in the morning and tell you I love you and I blacked your eye? What kind of love is that? So I'm not pointing a finger. Ain't like I ain't never mother knocked a woman upside of my head, but that mother was a fighting lion ass mother. She wasn't no mother little, little uh, squirrel like you was beating the up, okay? This mother was busting in, bleeding. That nigga, I be leaking. She got bruises and she was a light skinned mother. You just had to pluck her ass and then show the up. But mother knew what was going Yo, shit. Better not go home and now you're gonna get, you're gonna get sworn. Yo, it was just like that. And so I'm not pointing the kettle. I'm pot can't call the kettle black, puff. All I'm saying is, you admitted it. You freed yourself, mother. You freed yourself. Well, it's cool, puff. Everybody, everybody got some bullshit with them. Wish you luck in all your endeavors. I don't judge you. It's not my place to judge you and shit. But you freed yourself. And I'm pretty sure. Ye shall be judged if you was doing what Diddy is doing. And a lot of people are looking past the fact that P. Diddy did a lot of dirt to a lot of people. We're not just talking about the Cassie incident. No, we ain't just talking about that. See, this, here's the thing about the Cassie incident. The Cassie incident is something that went on with multiple women around Diddy. She wasn't the only one that that happened to. And so we have people saying that, you know, because it's an old situation or whatever, that we should kind of forgive him and let him grow into a better man and all of that. Bro, listen, y'all don't understand what Diddy has done to a lot of people. And a lot of people have been complaining about this dude for a very, very, very long time. From his artists, to his women, to just other people that never became an artist of his, but were somewhere around his uh, vicinity. And you have to realize that at this point, all the things that he's done over the past years, I mean, 
let's start from the the, the Biggie and Tupac situation. Let's start from there first. When he joined with the, the Jimmy Henchman and when he was doing all these things and then he started with the, the hanging around the gang members of LA trying to get some sort of uh I don't know, I guess some sort of street thing going to where he has muscle on the street or whatever. It, it started from that point and on down. I mean, even Short Knight, look what Short Knight is right now. Even Short Knight had, you know, his part of doing devious things to people. But the thing about Short Knight is, his thing was always street. His thing was always the street stuff. Not anything else that has been said about Short Knight. Um, you know, crazy allegations that never surfaced any um, real evidence of. We're not going to speak on that. But the thing about his violence and the things that he did amongst his studios, you know, to his... Um, so-called artists or people that worked around him that he didn't agree with or maybe he was trying to help somebody get out of the contract or whatever and you know he chose to use his muscle that's known about sure around the whole industry that's known about sure you understand what i'm saying but when it comes to diddy a lot of people seem to look at diddy as this dude who don't really have street cred, street muscle, a dude that's just soft and he's just old soft dude is just trying too hard. Let me tell you something. Diddy is a dangerous person. And I'm not going to say he's a dangerous person because he's a gangster like that. I'm not saying that. Diddy is one of those guys that will get you hurt the more scared he is he's one of those type of dudes but he's on he's on this this thing where he has connections to where he can be a spoiled dude and a spoiled dude usually turns into a bully a spoiled dude usually turns into somebody who's sour towards other people if he feels he's better than you if he feels it's something that you want from him he's gonna muscle you and and bully you and make you feel like you're beneath him before you get it but then he'll get in the public and pretend hide his hands stuff like that that's the kind of dude Diddy is so you have to understand what I'm saying you have to understand what other people are saying about Diddy Diddy does these things and he does it intentionally day by day year by year and he's been doing this over a decade and people do not understand this so all of y'all coming out saying well, we should, you know, forgive and what God would do and all this old other stuff. I tell you what God would do. God would do what he's doing to his ass right now. That's what God would do. Y'all want to know what God would do at this at, in this situation? He's doing it right now. God is putting it on him right now. That's what God would do. That's what God would do. Since y'all so smart. And then a lot of you, I seen a video of people having their little, you know, inputs, trying to give an example of themselves. Let me tell you something. You have not played the field the way Diddy has played the field. You have not had any connections the way Diddy has had connections. You have not had tools to do devious things to people 
the kind of tools that Diddy has had, you have not had those tools to do these devious things to people at a multitude or a magnitude that Diddy has done to people. You cannot explain your situation and compare it to a Diddy. You cannot do it. You can't do it. So can we please get people to stop coming on here on it and you know in the media just making themselves look foolish trying to give out your testimony telling on yourself because I don't know you and other people don't know you and now that we know you we know you for the fuck shit that you are explaining to us about yourself trying to compare it to a Diddy situation and trying to give, get us to forgive Diddy the way you've been forgiven or the way you will forgive her because you have your woes in your life. Everybody has their woes in their life. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is innocent. Everybody has some sort of intentional ill will, whether it was for survival purposes or just for a devious purpose at the moment. And they had to really check themselves and Get rid of that demon inside of them and for, forgive themselves before they can even move forward with life and they've grown from that. That's different. Diddy is a work, he's a piece of work. Diddy is a, a, a working system that will continue if what is going on with him now does not happen. That's bottom line. If what is going on with Diddy right now doesn't happen, he will continue. There's no intent of him being any kind of real man, any kind of real person, and, and, and having any kind of humanity in him. That dude is a demon. You have to understand what kind of life he came from. For one thing, his mother was a uh it was a model right you have to understand the kind of people that she had him around this is the reason why daddy is able to move around in the in the, in, in the industry the way he is now when he became a mentor i mean uh when he be, when he was under mentorship right you have to understand who got him under this mentorship first his mother was around these kind of people first you understand so you have to know what kind of person he is all he see is red in this industry that's all he see because he's listen man there was a lot of cruel people way before Diddy way before Diddy so when Diddy came up in the industry he came up under those cruel people he's seen cruel things amongst these people he's seen how it works that's why they are awarding him right now with all of these, you know, different connections and, and, and all this money and, you know, all this. That's the reason why they're awarding him because he's made it through the storm. He's been one of those that stayed down with them from the beginning of his career, from the beginning of his ever since he was an aspect of this industry he was under mentorship under some evil people y'all better go look that up that's the reason why he is the way he is he's always been the way he is why do y'all think a person like diddy when he first came up and started his record label right y'all have to remember diddy didn't have a record label at the beginning diddy had something going on to where he was still on the mentorship and he was trying to prove himself in the industry he was trying to prove himself to his people the one he was up under what he can do or whatever and they didn't want what he was doing so he branched off and started doing his own thing but you have to understand he was still under mentorship under the industry itself he was still under the different people y'all have to this <laughs> Listen, uh, let me slow down a little bit because I'm getting hype. I'm getting crazy with my words. Listen. When Diddy started off, after he was rejected from the 
the project that he was doing and, and his whole idea of what he wanted to do after he was rejected that did not stop him from being in the industry you know why because he was already in it he was already connected he was already in contact and he was going head forward he was not backing down and what i mean by back, not backing down what i mean by not backing down I don't mean he was being this warrior, this lion, and he was just, you know, savaging his way up to the top so he can survive. And, uh, no, 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 no. What I mean by what I said is, this dude was willing to be the industry. You have to understand by his mentor, his mentors, once he's seen what he's seen and learned what he learned and, and, and realized the different paths that he could take to become what he want to become, that was it. See, you have to understand it from this point. Let me, let me, let me break it down to layman terms. See, you have to understand it from this point. Let's say you was this dude, this new dude in the neighborhood, right? And once you started getting to knowing people and, you know, you have a few adults that's keeping you up under their wings. They showing you, you know, what to do, what not to do or whatever, uh, whether it's your parents, your uncles or, you know, other people around the neighborhood, you know. And um, within the community, you have other kids that, you you, you know, you, you play around with or whatever, but they don't have this mindset that you, that you have. You are basically connected to every uh situation that's going on within the community right and so like i say you have people that's keeping you up under your wing keeping you up under their wings or whatever and you start learning different ropes and different tactics in the in the community you start learning different passageways within the community to do what you know you want to do or whatever and you see how things work in the community and you become one of those people that's just of the community no matter what who moves in no matter who moves out no matter what you are the community and you become the community because everybody know you everybody know you've learned the path everybody know that you've been up under the wings and starting to you know react some of the things that you you was taught or you seen happen or whatever everybody know you are the community you are that that guy you are the one that everybody will turn to eventually because you've grown up in this community and learned everything about it everybody knows this and this what diddy is diddy is that kid damn why nobody sees this diddy is that kid This is the reason why he moved the way he moved. This is the reason why he say he's not going to stop. This is the reason why he say he can't quit. This is not coming from the mindset of a person who just got all odds against them. This come from a person who knows he has both feet in concrete in this shit. Any big names that you can think of know this dude knows his ways around the industry. He is the industry. No, he's not God, but he is the industry. You see what I'm saying? He's that kid that they raised. He's that kid that the industry has raised. That's why he's evil the way he is. That's why he knows how to do certain tactics, like hurry up and pay the guards off so this tape don't go out of me whipping the shit out of Cassie. This is the reason why he know how to do this stuff, uh, shooting people and, 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 and amongst all these other people around him, nobody tells. There are certain tactics he has learned that people was doing before him 
he ain't doing nothing new. He's not bringing nothing new to the industry. He's only repeating what he was taught to do. That's what a lot of y'all ain't getting. So the next time y'all get ready to get back in the media and go explaining how your life was and how you comparing your life to Diddy, you cannot compare your life to Diddy. He's not one of those guys you can compare your life to. This dude, all he see is red all day long. All he see is red. If a new uh, up and coming artist coming, he see red. That's all he see. Think about the music that Diddy has put out recently. Oh, hold on. What music has he put out recently? Other than a couple of singles. Uh, this little club banger that he put out with, uh, with, with Young Miami. Um, probably a few other little singles here and there. Like, these little drizzles. and That stuff is not enough to make the money that he has. Even the royalties from back in the days from older... Uh, artists from back in the days like those royalties is not paying him like like that for him to be making the money that he has right now that's not doing that the feds know that that's another part of the reason why they raided his house the way they did I keep telling people over and over these famous people play by a different game. They play by a different rule. These rich people play by a different rule. Even the ones that came up in a rich family, they just happen to just be rich. Whatever their family was doing before they was born or whatever, and they inherited the richness, and they inherited all the, you know, the good shit. And they just happen to just be rich. They go to the school where all the rich kids go. You know. They play amongst the areas where all the rich kids play. They drive the cars that the rich kids drive. They go to the parties that the rich kids party at. This is all they know. All their life. Well, guess what? There are certain rules that they play by that the average person don't know about. Certain things that we look at as, oh, that's some strange shit. They don't, okay, for instance, you wonder why so much pedophile shit going on in Hollywood? I'm finna break it down to you. A lot of those rich parents they allow their kids to go to other people, other rich kids' houses. Some of those rich parents allow their kids to mouth off to them, to be bashful, to be rude, to sort of, quote and end quote, do their own thing, grow into themselves type of thing so some of these kids indulge in adult activities and they start dealing with other adults I said kids dealing with other adults the parents find out but the kids are already telling them basically what they ain't going to do and what they're going to do they get to a certain age where you're grounded doesn't work anymore. We're talking about people that don't really chastise their kids. Words are the only thing that they do to chastise their kids. We're talking about rich people. We're not talking about middle class people who, you know, uh, embraced some rule or some little... Uh, system that they heard uh, of some kind of program um, 
you know, psychologically thinking how to deal with your kids without, you know, violence, whatever. Chastising doesn't have to necessarily be looked at as violence. But that's just, I mean, w there's a difference between child abuse and there's a difference between spanking on the hands. Right? So, we're talking about that kind of stuff do doesn't go on in the rich neighborhoods. Most rich parents do not even tap their kids on the hand. Let alone give them a full-fledged belt. They don't do that. All they do is talk to them. Honey, I, I don't think you should. They ration with them all the time. Honey, I don't think you. Mom, but there's a. They do this all the time. This, this is how they converse between each other. Child and adult. So when their child get up to a certain age, whether it's 13, 14, and they go hanging out in parks. Then they start being slick and hanging out with adults. And then this is where the pedophile come in. You even have some rich kids that do the um, allowing other people, other adults to um, Sort of like the Michael Jackson situation, right? How Michael Jackson had all those kids at his home and anything could have happened in that home. We don't know what happened, but that's the life of the rich kids. So that's how a lot of that pedophile stuff happens in Hollywood. Or amongst the rich people, period. I mean, it happens a lot. Even in the hood, it happens. And we're talking about amongst kids that do get whippings, do get popped, do get punched in the chest, do you know, get really, really chastised, and it can still happen, but not not by not by intent. Some of these things happen by intent. Not saying that the child is responsible, but the parents are more responsible because the parents do not really stay on their kids a certain way. They stay on their kids as far as academics because they don't want their child to make the family look bad. So they don't want a dumb child. They don't want a child who's filling in their grades. They don't want a child who who's not making any money, he's on drugs, is not you know trying to get a job. They don't want that. So yeah, they stay on that type of stuff, but. All that other stuff, like that cat, the wrist is, they may try to talk to them. I'm going to seek you some help, try to get a psychologist or something to talk to them if they're going that that, that direction. But if they're just uh, normal, genuine uh, kid that just wants to just do what he wants to do, not really getting in too much trouble, guess what? They eventually get in areas where they hang with other adults that's the life of rich kids they play by different rules yes it happens in the hood too but it it's, it's not like I say it's not intentional when their parents find out that they're hanging in these areas with these adults they may say something to them about it but it's not going to stop them from doing it when our parents find out that we're hanging around other adults, things happen. Stuff get taken away from us. We're not allowed to go out the door sometimes. We're not allowed to do this or do that or we're being trite and we're being, you know, picked up after the school or made sure that we're not to ourselves to where we can make our own decisions anymore. We get that privilege cut off. They don't play by those kind of rules. So you have to understand when y'all be on it on this internet, in the media, saying what you would do, saying what they should have done, you have to realize these rich people do not play by your rules. 
You're just talking in mid-air. You're just making yourself look good or just making yourself look like you, you have some sort of sense. But it doesn't matter to them. So who are you talking to when you're on here telling people what you would do in this situation, in that situation? Oh, I don't think Cassie should have did this or did that. We're talking about rich people doing rich people stuff. Sometimes people are after the bag so bad that they will allow themselves to get hurt. Just enough to get that bag and then leave. You don't understand these things because you have not been around these kind of things. Some people do it in the hood. Like I say, some people... Some people get around drug dealers, they got all this money, and these females, you know, they, they want to live the lavish life, and they will allow some of these drug dudes, if they have a bad attitude or whatever, beat them until they get what they want out of this dude, and then they finally leave. Sometimes it's just like that. Even though, even amongst the, the poor homes, where you have the mom, the dad, the dad is getting, you know, overly drunk and beating on the mom, but she stays to make sure that she's able to care for her kids because he's the one providing the money until she can get on her feet to where she can get some help and move away from this dude. It happens like that. So just imagine how it is in the rich world. Some of these things are intentional. So many things are, oh yeah, I'm going to hook up with that dude and get this bag. I'm not saying that's what Cassie did, but some of these people do this. Some of these people put themselves in position where it's not intentional. They intended to get with this person to get with get next to the bag, but things went sour. And now they can't make a move to get away from that person because they have nowhere to go. Y'all have to understand, when you get around rich people, dog, and you have... Uh, a certain lifestyle that you live amongst these people you can't go back to where you came from if you came out of the hood you just can't come you just can't go back it's not because you're used to this lifestyle and you, you know if you do go back no what I'm saying is if everybody in that hood knew that you became rich somehow or you became uh connected to these famous people and this is how you've been living you can't go back to the hood they won't accept you back then you may say well, well what how about going somewhere else what well, what if you don't have money to go anywhere else see most people go back home because home is where you can go when you fall flat with nothing you can always go back home with nothing and build back up from scratch again you can't just go anywhere and do that you have to go back home if you want to be able to get back on your feet unless you plan on being homeless which makes the journey even harder So you have to understand these rules that these rich people play by, you will never get it unless you just take time out and watch, pay attention, see the things that they do. Why does it happen so much amongst these people? Just pay attention to the stuff that you hear, the stuff that you keep seeing over and over repeatedly. It's like a pattern. They just keep repeating the same stuff, different people. Epstein, like, you see what I'm saying? Kelly, R. Kelly, like, why is this happening? Why is R. Kelly doing what he's doing? I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not accusing him of anything, but why is he even in the, you know, the, the vicinity of this type of activity? Bill Cosby, the drug and the women for partying. Was he the only one doing it? No, that was a thing back then. They just used that to knock him down from whatever it is that he wanted to do. You have to understand the kind of plans that he had ahead of, ahead of himself. 
So a lot of times when you piss certain people off, they take the same very thing that is coming in these circles and use it against you. And everybody I like, oh well, that's why a lot of people get standoffish. They don't come in your defense. That's why. Because a lot of that stuff that they accused R. Kelly for, a lot of that stuff that they accused Bill Cosby for, a lot of that stuff that they accused Epstein for. I'm not saying accusations as if they didn't do it. I'm not saying they did or didn't. What I'm saying is look at the patterns. It's just the same old repeated patterns over and over and over again because it's in the industry, period. It's among the, amongst the rich circle, period. These things are happening amongst these people, period. But they expose the one that they hate the most. They use it as a tool to get rid of you if they don't like your actions. They don't like something that you're doing that they want to do and they just need to move you out of the way so they can make it happen. They do this stuff. They expose this, the very thing that they also are doing and say it's you. And you can't say, oh, no, it's not just me. It's them too. You can't say it because now you implement it yourself. They know this stuff. So this is the reason why Diddy moves the way he moves. And now he knows it's his turn. He's pissed somebody off. There's a, there's a, a shift of power happening right up on his nose. He don't want to let go. And somebody is saying, nobody, you're letting go. This is how they play. Look at what they're doing to Drake. Out of all the years, you mean to tell me it took Kendrick to beef with Drake for all this stuff to come out? Once again, it's the same old stuff. The PDF. It's the same old stuff. The assaults. Now they're talking about animals. <laughs> it's the same old stuff. It's just repeatedly over. Why? Because this is how they play in these circles. That's the reason why uh, Kendra said, um, you can look on my life. My life is boring. Because he claims he doesn't indulge in that stuff. But he knows Drake does. Because Drake is a team player. So Drake, uh, it's common for people like Drake to do that. He came up, what it was, either Disney or Nickelodeon, one of those two, he came up watching how it goes. See, Drake has two, two worlds, the acting world and the music world. And he see that they're both similar. You don't have to indulge in those activities, but to reach to, to certain levels, the Diddy levels, the Drake levels, um, at some point, you have to play ball. And so, like I say, this is the reason why a lot of these people when one person is getting accused, allegations start striking up, case uh, paper uh, paperwork start popping up. I've seen a lot of you say, "Well, where's his friends? Where's his friends? Where you think his friends are? They're backing out of the limelight. They're letting what's supposed to happen to Diddy happen to Diddy." Once it's done, everybody's back playing ball again. Until the next person that they have to get rid of. It's a gamble that they play. It's a Russian relay gamble. You never know 
who the barrel is going to stop at. It stopped at Diddy. It's his time. There's a shift in power and we'll see where that shift goes. We will see. It won't be today, it won't be tomorrow, but soon we will see. So that's all I have for right now, I and I. I'm always in the building, I'm out.